let's let's take some a, a step back a bit. I think Barcelona caused this problem. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Before you roast me, let me say why. Let me say why. This this whole problem started when Barcelona employed Pep Guardiola, and Pep was yeah. hugely successful. Yeah. Every club now started to fantasize with the idea of bringing back their ex-players. Remember, Pep was the coach of Barcelona's B team, and he had little or no experience coaching a top side. Yeah, so, but then bringing him to a team, to the first team, and he came in with that kind of success and has been able to, whatever your opinion about Pep Guardiola is, he's a top-class manager, and he has been successful. Okay, so now, Every club started flirting with that idea. Chelsea looked around and felt it was going to be a very, very, very good story. It will make for good reading that the club's greatest ever player, Frank Lampard, comes in as the manager of the club at the time when the club is at its lowest point, the transfer ban and all that. And then it was a good story, you know, helped the club. Now, the season, um, he came fourth in the league. Okay. Right. To a large extent, I would say, I, I would almost not credit, give Lampard too much credit. And here's my reason. We, didn't, we qualified for the Champions League because it looked at some point like the other teams didn't want it. Like they didn't really want it. Then, post-lockdown, the likes of Leicester dropped terribly. The performances tailed off badly. Now, let's bring it to, um, let's start from when Chelsea employed Frank Lampard. He started creating problems for himself from his first preseason with the club. Lampard had to sell David Lewis. I think it was close to the end of the, tr the transfer window already. He asked David Lewis. It was in a friendly match against RB Salzburg. So he dropped David Lewis and he said he wasn't taken to instructions and all that. And so he sold Luis to Arsenal. Luis has a, his, his body, his best friend in Chelsea. That's, um, um, what's his name again? William. William. Yes, that's his best friend. They co-own a restaurant. Okay. Player power is real in football. Um, Frank Lampard himself was part of a cartel at Chelsea in his time. I remember his public statement about AVB. AVB. Right. Yeah. <laughs> What was AVB's issue at Chelsea? AVB wanted to play a high line. And John Terry, who is Frank Lampard's friend, was not suited to a high defensive line. Remember the 5-3 mall in Chelsea got from Arsenal at Stamford? It was because of the high line. Robin Van Persie hat trick. It was because of the high line. Um, Arsenal had Theo Walcott roasting Chelsea seriously that day. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, so, now, coming back to his time as a manager, he wanted to break the back of the, 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 the big players who would have maybe given him problem. But he somehow forgot that at every club, you need those big players. You need those guys to, to provide leadership sometimes. When the going gets bad, you need those guys. As bad as David Lewis may be as a player, he's still a big character. Now, so you sold David Lewis. William already knew he was going out of the club. These guys have friends within the team. So politically, he had already started creating problems for himself within the playing squad. Now, look at Thomas Tuchel. The first lineup, don't read too much into his first lineup, but notice that in his first lineup, he went for the more experienced players. players that's it. That's it. That's beyond looking at the fact that these guys will be able to withstand the pressure of um, having to deal with the bad press and the bad results. That is a man who is he, he's, he's putting himself in the positive books of the big players. The style of play Tuchel implemented in the game against Wolverhampton still heavily dependent on crosses coming from the flanks. The best bet would have been to play Rhys James in that, in that game. That's the best crosser of the ball at Chelsea currently. But he opted for the more experienced players. The crosses were coming from, more from Cesar Spilqueta and Callum hudson Odoi. But what he did was to bring the big boys. Let me get in the good books of these guys, first of all. Yeah. Let me give them a chance to play themselves out of my plans. And then they can, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and then you cannot blame me for trusting. Tuchel has the track record of playing the kids. Right. 
right. He brought Pulisic through Dortmund. Okay, so he has yeah. a good track record. Yeah. yeah. So, but what he has done is given the big boys a chance. Play yourself out of the plans. Politically, he has done the right thing for himself. Mm. That's where Frank Lampard started getting it wrong at Chelsea. Then if we go to Lampard's in-game management, the only time I can say um, that Lampard actually did something tactically positive for Chelsea in his 18 months, I mean in-game management now, was the 3-3 draw at the Hortons against West Brom, where he changed things around in the, in the second half when Chelsea came back from three goals down and drew 3-3 and could have actually even won that game. Okay, so that's, for a top-class manager, you, your in-game management has to be A. I, I hear Lampard has an IQ of 150, which is high, but it didn't reflect in um, <laughs> the Chelsea, the, the Chelsea team. It Come didn't on. reflect, really. It didn't reflect. Come and on. So, so I think that his sacking was long overdue. The reason he remained at the club reflected in the club statement. Roman actually came out. That's the first time Roman Abramovich was coming out to release a public statement after a manager was sacked. But if you read that statement clearly, the club statement, they, they mentioned that there was no clear, defined path for progress. Yeah. That's what sacked Lampard. Try off the mic. <laughs> it's a Legbetter TV radio.